by your own uh, your will. When uh, when the Peter um, Peter is a very like uh, he's himself um, very strong will person, and he's very like um, he, he like to be uh, number one you know all the time. He he think he's very good. Um, uh, faithful to God at the beginning. Let's look at the book of John, chapter chapter 13. John, chapter 13, verse 35. John, chapter 13, verse from th uh, 36 to 38. John, chapter 13, verse 36 to 38. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I go, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow later. This is a foretelling about the Peter's in the for his future, 37. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you right now? I will lay down my life for you. So you can tell the Peter here, very uh, willing, uh, even his life lay down for him. And verse 38, Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, a cock shall not crow until you deny me three times. So Jesus knows uh, his, this time of uh, Peter's confessions, you know, his words, I will lay down my life for you, but Jesus knows that it's not really coming from bottom of his heart, the move by the love of Christ. It's more like emotional stuff up, saying these words. And, but later on, we know that, that when the Jesus resurrected from the death to make the final, I think that's a, that's a meal from the catching the fish. And then personally, uh, Jesus asked him, do you love me more than this? And he Three times we know it, a very famous one in John chapter 21, right? At that time, Peter says, you know that I love you. You know that I love you. That means at that time, he's a determined. This determined is he willing to give up his life. Yeah. He doesn't have to say, because, you know, I say, I say, at the beginning, he said, I even laid down my life for you. But at that time, he doesn't say it. He doesn't say it. I really loves you. No matter what, that this moment when you ask me the questions, I ask myself, I have to say truth, the words I can give it to you. I love you. I love you. Truly, uh, when you, truly when you love someone, your word is different. Your word is different. When you, uh, when you say, uh, when you say your parents, I love you, daddy. I love you, mommy. And then we, we say, okay, okay. I know you love me. I know. But later on, you come to me for, uh, for we are bankers. So you, you need, you know. but when, you, when I, I don't give you, then you complain. Us. I know that. I know that. But one day, one day you get married. And then you have own children. And you know how much you attach to your, your children. Their love. You pour to your children, at that moment, oh, this love that I received from my parents. And then, and how, how tough it is to raise the children, you know. And later on, uh, your children grown up to talk back to you, you know. Because I, I show them all my love. And then later, complain, mom, daddy, only you can do this to me. How come you don't do this to, for me? And then, oh, and then, but still, still. I have to say, I confess to my children, say, I love you. And then comes to your mind, wow, my parents love me this much. And then you go, you go back to your parents and say, mom, really, I love you. The word is different. Meaning is different. At that time, so your heart is different. Before, I love you is very shallow. But later, you're full of uh, emotions and also your heart is behind the way you bring up the words, the words love you is different. Why the Lord Jesus came to this world? He doesn't have to come to us. 
especially, you know, with the human natures, we are very stubborn natures. We are very, um, um, very selfish natures that we have. Yet, the Lord loves us, comes to us. He's willing to be like us, like a man. How precious it is. How precious it is. So when you come to approach to God, uh, uh, when you pray to the Lord, think about the true love, the essence. How much the, the Lord the loved us in my life. Once you go out to look around all the people, how many people to be a chosen one? But you are a chosen one. Because we are great? No, or we are not. We're just the same like others. But yet, out of the, out of the compassion of God, He chose us. Treat this as salvation. That's why He had to treat us very preciously. So when we come to the Lord, in the church, let us to be united. Let us to be a one mind. You know, later, we, are, we have a 10 people and 10 opinion. Do you think so? Have you talked to your, talk to your siblings? When you, when you ask something, I mean, when you, when you make conversation with your sibling, they always agree upon your, your idea, your suggestion? No? Yes? Everybody different now. Huh? Everybody different. If a four people, four opinions, I say. You think about a church is a hundred people, then a hundred opinions, actually. How these hundred opinions to be one? The only way we learn the love of Christ. So we can deny ourselves. And then we can submit to God. Then we can see how we can be united together. To be one mind. That's, that's the only way, especially in the church, that later on, maybe you have a good idea, yeah. Maybe your idea is better than others. But the only thing is you can express it's enough. Let the God can, let this to be, a, to, you know, to be one mind, to lead by the Spirit, to be one mind. So anybody in the church to be mature, how they dealing with the united one, one minded? If anybody have a different opinions or different opinion, church cannot be one. Usually, the one the very mature Christian, they don't say anything. They come to church, then they pray. Let the God can lead the heart to be one mind, asking God to help for the one mind. Now that's 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 that's, that's, a, that's a, the most precious. Uh, way of lead our life to be one mind. The Paul here, um, Philippians chapter two, verse two. Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, unity in spirit, intent on the one purpose. So ultimately, why you came here today? Ultimately. Why you have to sit down here listening my boring lecture? For, for one purpose. For our salvation. We have a one purpose. Our salvation. And also, we can have our life here for, to establish His kingdom. It's not my kingdom. It's not my kingdom. Let, you know, when we have uh, the Lord's Prayer... Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom comes. It's not your kingdom come. It's not my kingdom comes. It's a, his kingdom come true to us. That's the, the most important thing. The most important thing. That's how we can keep the peace in the church and also within our family too. And later on, uh, everybody get married, right? Anybody who doesn't want to get married, raise your hands. Okay, wow. Oh. <laughs> I know, because after a few, you change your mind. So, But <laughs> um, the marriage life is important thing is too, to be united. I do not know your personality, but some of them, very strong personality. We have to ask God. 
to soften my heart, soften my heart. Yeah, so make my heart to be gentle. Jesus asking, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 11, Jesus invite all the, all the people, come to me, uh, learn from me. Uh, my yoke is light. What he can learn, on, uh, what we can learn from him. Gentle and humble mind. That's what it is. That's, that is the one we can seeking for, that we can establish the kingdom of God in the, um, here in the church, in his house. Church is not, church is not, church ownership is not belongs to us. Church ownership is belongs to God. That's why we say God's house, is it? It's not my house. Well, my house is different. My house, you can arrange yourself, your, your room, or if, you know, if your parents listen to you, mom and daddy, this living room, we can change this, this. Well, mom and daddy, okay, then you can do it, no problem. But church, that's different. We have to arrange for according to the, his way. God's way. So their need of wisdom. And there are a lot of, a lot of people there. We have, to, we have to pray for that. Let the God can help to move. So that's a... That's a um. So the verse, verse 3, uh, chapter 2, verse 3, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. Selfishness. We are we easily... My, my idea is best. My idea is best. Ah, oh, God never listened to me. When you become a church board member, ah, oh, the guy expressed, but they don't listen to me. Uh, no, you don't have to. They don't have to accept your opinions. Sometimes my opinion is right, but I don't have, a, I don't have enough prayer, so they don't accept my opinion. It's possible too. Huh? Only at that time, you know. It's okay. Leave it up to God. But if, if you have sincerely, you can express yourself. That's good enough. Then uh, leave it up to God. You can pray about it. Yeah. That's the best. So because God's a house, yeah. I am only what I am the servant of God. I'm the slave of God. I do for God. That's good enough. Yeah. Selfishness is one of the way to killing of the unity. Yeah. Empty conceit also, empty conceit. Sometimes we are very proud of ourselves. Proud of ourselves. My opinions. This is the best. I am better than you. I'm more educated than you. But this kind of idea, that's wrong. That's wrong. The Bible says here, the um, verse 3 uh, Continue, he mentioned that, but with the humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than himself. The which means somebody, somebody else says something, different opinions. You regard that it's important. The opinion is important. The idea is important. But then you find out the way you guide it to the, there's a ground, the common ground invited, to respect the opinions. Do you like that somebody treats you very respectfully or despise you and they look down upon you or which way you like it? Naturally, somebody respect you, then it is best. Yeah. Even in the church, even the little ones, even the little ones. When little ones in the comes, oh, you don't know anything, come on, you don't have to say, say anything. I know better than you, okay? You're just quiet. The one who, I, the one of myself, is somebody quiet, quiet. Then I said, oh, "This is this is bad, actually." I can tell once you become a parent. Naturally, we learn that how we can respect our children. Even little little ones, they're asking something. The parents, "Oh yeah, you need you you want that you want that." Oh, I think you need it. You need it. That's a parent's attitude. Don't you think? That's how we grown up. Then we feel we we have a comfort. We build up own confidence. But mom and dad is shut up. You don't need that. You know, then, 
there's not a real family unity then. Uh, we have to respect them. We have to respect them. We have to learn that once we become our parents, we have to remember later on we are getting old, that we need our children's help. So when we, are, when we are become our children, we have to respect them. Later when we're getting old, when somebody has to change my diaper, I need my children. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not always I can be myself alone, help myself. And later on, maybe you have experience, you change your parents' diaper. You can tell that. Yeah. Once you reach to my age, you're, that, you're, going, you're going to have that experience. That you learn about how much they offer, offer, you know, they offer me of love. So we have to respect each other. We cannot say we always grade ourselves. No. That's how we can respect each other. The Lord Jesus, he respect. He respect other people. He's not like a, he's not like a Pharisees and Sadducees. Pharisees and Sadducees, they really looked down upon the rest of the people. Ah, this is the bad people. This, this one is not holy. This one is not holy. I am the one holy. I am the one holy. Sometimes in the church you can see that some people the weakness they have. You can see it. Some people who commit sin, them, they know that their sin is, is there. You can try to help them, recover them, and pray for them. No matter what kind of sin they committed, don't think that you are better than them so you can look down upon them. When you find out somebody who committed adultery events, when you see it, ah, this, this one, this one, I have to kick, kick them out, out of the church. He is the source of sin. Get out of there. Don't say that. Don't think that we are better than them. If God do not protect us, we might get involved in that situation. We have to show our compassion. That's all. The final condemnation, it depends on God's hands. How we can get the, remove the sin out of the church with the true compassion, the true prayer for them. Of course, the person who continues to commit sin, that we have the church authority to bring up, to, to take actions. But still, we have to love them. Still, hopefully, they can repent and come to God. That's our true Christianity. Sometimes, you know, holiness means we can just differentiate with them. That's not a true holiness. It cannot be unity. Then. Same mind, same love. It's not because I condemn others, I can be unity with only some group of the people. No. Church is not like that. But yet we have to remember selfishness and, and the empty conceit is really destroyed us. And even our unity. That's like it's more important uh, than himself. Um, verse 4. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. It's, it's a Christian life is a, how we can show our love. We can care about other people. Care about other people. We don't have to bother them, you know. When you... When you when somebody buy a house, wow, thank God, thank God. How much, how much did you pay for this house? Wow, and, oh, you know, we don't have to do that. That's not, a, that's not here, you know, it's for the interests of others. We can, uh, we, when they have a joyful instance, we can joy with them, uh, joy with them. When they suffer themselves, we can show our compassion, empathy with them. That's how they, we can interest for others, that's how we become a unity ourselves. So the Paul here, in this way, that he can be, he can be joy with them. Chapter two, verse one. If you go back to here, the four point he uh, he mentioned about for the unity, how we can ourselves to help ourselves to to build the unity, is first one is they say any encouragements in Christ. Any encouragements? Encouragement in Christ. 
the what we uh, we the Lord and also the all the disciples when they write these letters and all the the a lot of a lot of encouragements uh, for us. So when we are feel lonely or when we have trouble, when we have difficulty we are facing, the word of God give us encouragement. That's why the Bible is precious. The Bible is precious. And also the second one talk about uh, if there is any consolation of love, the comfort of love, true love, this is what we're seeking for. The church is the place where we can fellowship together. We can encourage and showing our love. So we can also regain our strength. Yeah. So this is the, what happened in the church. And also the fellowship with the, the Spirit. The fellowship of the Spirit. We can feel the Spirit of God with us. You know, when you come forward, we pray together. Uh, we have a, the feeling of uh, the same family. Can you feel that? Same family. We are family in the Lord. It's so precious. Of course, in this way, pray, it's okay. But we, while we, you come forward, pray together, we feel, oh, we are family. We hear the sounds of when you When you visit in Korea, maybe in the future, and when you attend the, the, their service and pray together, wow, this is my family. You can tell that. When 1982, I came here to USA and attended El Monte, the first church in here. Um, before, they sep before they branch out to Garden Grove, I attend there. Wow, they pray the same, same prayer. At that time, I haven't received the Holy Spirit. Wow, they pray the same, same, same prayer. Wow, this is the family. So in the future, this is a side way a little bit, but do not discriminate to other races in the church. We are in a one family, then it is one family. Yeah. That's very precious spirit that our, our church we should have. And also we love other people. Love other people. Don't exclude it that sometimes our church, you know, what uh, for me this is my spirit. Anybody who come to the truth seeker in our church, I call them brother and sister. I don't say Mr. and Mrs. I don't say that. I say brother and sisters. And then somebody comes, how come they're not baptized? How come they're brother and sister? Well, they, they all create by God. Right? So they're brother and sisters. Only thing is they haven't baptized yet. Only thing is not, not restore their relationship with God. They're supposed to. Yeah. So anybody in the church, anybody against me, that's fine. But that's my spirit. So I'll call the brothers and sisters. And also, I like, the, I like the spirit in Hawaii. They're all brothers and sisters. A little brother was, I, you know, a little brother, oh, brothers, I hug them. And then the little brother come, hi, brother. And I was just, oh, we're a brother in the Lord. You know, so. Because here is our customs, you know, we call the pastors and the elder, whatever you call but, but I like to call each other brother and sister. I like that. But we are we are brother brother and sister in the Lord. This this kind of uh, this kind of you know the circles, we love it. The one so one day one day you attend uh, Hawaii. There's uh, the service after they hugging. You know, no matter big and small, we hug. Hi brother. Hi sister. Hi sister. This we hug each other. Oh, it's so. It's, at the beginning, it was very strange, but now I get used to go to, I sister, it's, it's a precious. We are in the Lord. We share our love in this way. We have a comfort for each other. This is true love. And the fourth one here, the chapter 2, verse 1, says, If any affections and compassions, the Lord Jesus, many times he performed the miracles and helping others with a full of compassion, full of compassions. The Matthew chapter 14, whenever Jesus feeds 5,000, also at that time with the compassion. And Matthew chapter 18 also. And uh, when Matthew 20, when he uh, healing that, uh, you know, the uh, blind man, full of compassions. Compassion is precious. When you pray for somebody, 
Have you noticed that when you pray for somebody, you don't have any feeling? Then, very dry. Oh, you know, in the church, the, the prayer list, I pray for somebody, I pray for somebody, I pray for somebody. But if you don't have a feeling, that's actually not a prayer, actually. It's not a prayer. Until you have a true feeling of love. What the Lord Jesus here, the here, Paul here mentioned that this, verse 5, we have this attitude, having this heart, we can say, uh, the Lord Jesus have a mind of servants. Mind of servants. He came to hear. And also he came to this world as a, the minds of physicians, healing other people. So that's his, uh, the one of precious work. The Matthew chapter 9 I'm sure because you know this, but Matthew chapter 9, verse 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 12, 13. But when he heard this, he said, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. Verse 13. But go and learn what this means. Yeah. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus' the expression about he came to this world as a physician. There's a lot of people need our, um, our compassion, actually. Nowadays, we, are, we only, only just talk about um, within the church, right? Within the church. But sometimes we have to think about out of the church. Out of the church. I would love not to be within, but extended out too. They are out there need a lot of people to need our hands, actually. But those who not, uh, those who, you know, there's many uh, charity organizations. They're trying to help uh, reach out hands to other people. In the future, when you finish your college, when you when you start to work, please find out one place, at least you can choose the one to helping them. Then you are, your mind is different at that time. Every month, maybe $20. It's not that a lot. But at least you can join somewhere, show some part of your hands to help others. Not only for yourself. You go to the mall, you buy something for yourself, for yourself, uh, but you don't know where there's other people who do not have uh, what we have. You want to, you want to, you don't want to think about them. Just as long as myself is comfortable, as long as I have everything, then that's fine. No. You have to reach out hands. Uh. The one thing, one thing I, I urge you, because I, if you don't have the experience of true love, the way you share other people, we never grow up ourselves. No matter how many times you attend the seminars, no matter how, many, how much you learn the Bible knowledge, you never learn the true love of Christ. Then. Only, only through your knowledge wise. You have to find out yourself. This is your, one sense, your assignment for your life. Don't think about only yourself. But somebody that need my help, they can reach out hands. It is important things. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> anyway, Jesus came to here as a, as a physician. Um, one day you have chance to go to Africa or other country. Yeah, that's a part of it. But this country also, a lot of people need our help too. So hopefully you can find it and show your love. And also your prayer, not only within the church, but outside. That will be, uh, that'll be benefit. Uh, because only one minute, so I have to stop here. Mm. 
So we can continue for, actually we almost finished the book of uh, Philippians. Only two more chapters to go actually. So uh, I have uh, several hours and if it's possible I can use some, uh, my press session also can share the message too. Any questions out of this? We have a 20 seconds to go. I know it's a tired, second hour, then a little bit tired. But after the review session and the lunch, you regained your strength, and then we can go for the afternoon session too. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, yes. <laughs> Let's all pray inside, yes. <laughs>